guys, as you can see from my fabulous attire, it is St. Patrick's Day, uh, the 17th of March. If you've been following along, you're like, do what now? Because <laughs> my last video was the 13th of March, which was, you know, quite a few days ago. So what happened? First of all, there was a two-day blizzard. So it was the biggest blizzard in a long time, in at least a decade or two. Um, thousands of people without power and stranded in their cars and multiple foot deep drifts and all kinds of crap. It was madness. Uh, people lost power. People lost their phone service and their computer service for a couple days. So the 14th, um, the 13th and 14th were the blizzard days. We were down. 15th, we dug ourselves out and got back in there. And as I suspected, it had finished uh, fermenting. It was bubbling away a little bit on the 13th. Very small, very infrequent bubbles. So, okay, either that is CO2 being released from the process or it's finishing, just finishing, so it should be done. So then we went to transfer on the 15th, day before yesterday. So your question is, um, okay, Sparkles, why is there no um, freaking uh, video on here where we're transferring? And the reason is it didn't work. So this is my full disclosure video of all the problems we've been having and trying to figure out. But I want to—I figured out sometimes trouble or even failure is more informative than success. So I'm going to walk you through full disclosure issues and hopefully you'll learn something if something happens to you. So here we go. We went to transfer, opened up the bottom, hooked the pumps up, did everything we're supposed to do normally like we do all the time. And it started and it wouldn't, and it stopped. It wouldn't pump, so it was too thick. I went back, stirred it up, hoping it would be thinner. It wasn't. So this per was very perplexing. We know that it fermented, and we know that it reached a point where it stopped fermenting, Normally, it would be thin when that happened. Thinner. But it wasn't. So this is bad news. So we're like, okay, now what? Did the whole process die? Did something go wrong? Did we not, since we couldn't cook it, maybe it didn't extract the starches? I mean, with this level of experimentation, a recipe that hasn't been made in over 100 years, with no modern technology, there's literally no way to tell. There's also no way to test a really thick mash without a full lab because we, 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 if you have a thin liquor, you, liquid, you can test uh, you know whatever specific gravities or alcohol contents or whatever you want to. But when you have a really thick, viscous liquid, then you're forced to go to a lab lab, which we don't have a full-scale lab. So there's no way for us to figure it out. So I was baffled. I said, okay, well, maybe... It processed all the available sugar, but all this starch is left over because none of that was broken down because there wasn't enough diastatic properties in the whole little bit of malted rye. This seemed fairly likely. I mean, malted rye is not necessarily as powerful as malted barley. There wasn't a ton of it. Maybe that's the problem. So we decided to violate the rules of our, you know, idea about doing nothing but the ancient stuff because we've got 400 gallons just sitting there and nothing's happening and we can't move it. So I said, okay, let's put amylase in there. Now amylase is, is, is the natural, actual, you know, um, enzyme that's needed so it wouldn't change the recipe, it wouldn't change the flavor, it wouldn't do anything like that. But if all that starch was still locked up, it might free it up and say, okay, now it would kick back on. So if A, the thickness was from starch that was unprocessed, B, the amylase broke that down into sugars the yeast could get to, and C, the yeast was still alive in there, when we introduced the amylase, it would have started re-fermenting or fermenting the sugar. So we put, put amylase in and, and blended it in. 
and nothing happened. That's bad news, right? So now I know the thickness is from something else. The amylase, is, you know, the original recipe did its job. There's nothing else left to break down. When you put a ton of amylase in there and you blend it up and wait for a day or two and nothing happens, it means that it's not breaking anything else down. So I've got problems. Okay. I don't know. Maybe the whole thing is poisonous to yeast. Maybe the yeast is dead. Um, I don't know. Maybe the amylase worked. Uh, but we don't know because the yeast is there. So I pulled a bucket out and I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll take a five gallon bucket and maybe the amylase worked, but the yeast is dead. Okay, I'll put fresh yeast in a, in a side bucket. So pulled out a bucket, put yeast in there, good amount, whizzed it up, ready to go. Nothing. Okay, what now? All right, so I've got a, 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 a product that's way too thick, that the yeast is not doing anything to, that the amylase is not doing anything to. It's acting like a finished product, but it's too thick to move. So I began thinking, okay, maybe the recipe is just off. Because we, we didn't know the exact um, amounts of each thing. We know what's in it, but the exact amounts we didn't necessarily know. So it was our best guess. Maybe it's too thick. Maybe the white corn, being an heirloom Colorado corn, and and maybe extra gummy, extra thick, maybe the raw rye and the white corn together made something so thick that it just can't process properly. So I said, okay. That was yesterday. Waited another whole day. Now here we are on the 17th, 18th day of the project, 17th day. Fermentation's been stopped for a couple of days now. I tried the amylase experiment, nothing. I tried the yeast experiment, nothing. Okay. So I said, okay, smarty pants, here it goes. I'm going to take this product that I have right now and I'm going to add sugar because, and in a bucket, right, in a bucket, if the yeast is alive, or the amylase worked and the yeast is alive, or whatever. But something like the thickness, the viscosity, is stopping it from properly processing, or maybe it has fully processed, but it's too thick still to transfer. Maybe if I put sugar in there, it'll suddenly start fermenting, and I know the yeast is alive. But there's no sugar for the yeast to eat. So I put sugar in it this morning in, a, in, a, in, a, in that bucket that had the amylase and the um, the yeast in it, but it was dead. It was just sitting there. Sat there for 24 hours, nothing happened. Added sugar, and within an hour or two, it started to bubble and ferment. So I know that what I've got is live yeast in a overly thick, mostly processed environment that's not high enough sugar to kill the yeast, but smells amazing like apples. It smells like apples and apple cider. So it smells really good. It's not gone bad. It tastes like it's supposed to taste. It hasn't gone bad, but it hasn't fully processed because it's so thick. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to double down. We're going to remove 200 of the 400 gallons. We're going to fill the fill it back up with 200 more gallons of water. We're going to add a couple hundred pounds of sugar, blend the whole thing up, jump start it again, keeping all the same flavor and all the alcohol that's in there, making it thinner, jump starting the whole process, making it thinner enough and fermenting again for just a few days get to that to that sugar ferments it'll be thinner the starch will be finished the sugar will be finished and we'll be able to transfer it because it'll be half the thickness it is now and then we'll put the 200 gallons back in we'll store them in four 55 gallon drums sealed we'll put them back in we'll process them again we'll do the same thing and what we'll end up with is two of the same batches that's the experiment we start tomorrow 
and we continue to fight this battle. 1889 Project. Continuing. Next time we know, make it thinner. Use a little more sugar and a little less grain. And now we know. but Because this stuff has reacted very, very harshly and very... It's become very gummy and very thick. So we have a plan. And I'll touch back with you when we get that plan up and running. But we're going to be another week or two doing all of that until we're ready to finally wash and run this whole thing. So talk to you soon. Full disclosure, 1889 experiment, highly experimental, uh, but exciting and delicious. And it smells like apple. It's amazing. So it's going to, we'll see. We'll see. But like I said, it's been an experiment from day one. All right. See you soon. <laughs>